G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Well, we're at Thursday evening here in Australia, so getting close to the weekend, and Bitcoin has hit a bit of a pause, and so has the whole market. We've got back up to that kind of $1.7 trillion mark. We're really struggling to break that $1.8 trillion mark. It just does feel like a heavy point at the moment. The whole $2 trillion, I mean, it's happened sort of reasonably quickly, I suppose you could say. And yeah, some coins have started to bleed off a bit. And it's likely a bit of new money that's here that have got in and made some profits and they're very nervous and just gone, you know what, I'm gonna take some of these profits quickly. That's my sort of gut feeling. Whether that's actually what's happening, who knows, you know. You'd have to make up your, your own decision. But that's what I think it is. New money that's come in and they've probably, you know, they may have doubled their money or, you know, at least just gone up a bit. And they're very nervous about how Bitcoin's been performing over the last sort of, couple of weeks at least and so they're taking profits thinking that it's going to go lower and look maybe it is well I guess we'll find out time will tell that's generally how it works but let's have a look all right so again 1.74 trillion dollars so we we're not too far off that two trillion dollar mark and that really will be something considering where we were you know less than maybe six months ago we were really struggling to kind of get over that trillion dollar mark and then we finally did and we thought everything was going great and then we had the pullback and it was under a trillion but really it was under a trillion like maybe only six weeks ago I think maybe and so we're then back up near two trillion so you know it's up and down a little bit but generally going up BTC dominance almost 60 percent not quite ETH dominance down and gas price is still pretty cheap, which is really nice. All right, as we can see, there's a bit of red here, but nothing's looking too bad at the moment. All right, what's pumped? What's done well in the last 24 hours? All right, clever, never heard of it. So probably says how clever I am. <laughs> they seem to have done all right, but oh my God, 588% in seven days. If you're in this, for the love of God, please take some profits. Get your money back at the very least. I would not be surprised if this dumps oh so hard. And I'm not saying Clever's a bad project. I know absolutely nothing about it. But if something does 588% in a week, it's going to crash really hard at some stage. Hedera Hashgraph, I mean, that just continues to climb. Uh, and again, maybe take some profits. Not so much on that one. You know, something doubling in a week in crypto is not exactly overly amazing, but something going, you know, basically 7x in a matter of a week, that is likely something that's going to dump hard. Theta doing well. Bitmax, Bitcoin Gold, really. I don't know where that came from. Zillica, Crypto.com. But look, really, there's only a couple of good gains here, and it's really the top four. You know, they're good double-digit gains, but... Everything else is just, you know, your kind of standard gains, you know, and really if you got these kind of gains just in a week, you'd still be pretty happy. But we're in the crypto space because we like the really big gains. Uh, and so you what, you know, would generally be right in a week. We want to make in, you know, 24 hours if we can. All right. Now we need to have a look, though. What has dumped? Has anything really tanked? Because we saw there was definitely some red. Nope. Excuse me. Not nothing's really tanked polygon yep down 13 percent. it did so well and it's still up 30 percent because again this was it over the last seven days so yes it's going to have a pullback and look you can go back over almost the last kind of three weeks or so polygon's been doing extremely well decentraland pancake swap avalanche Aave. so there is a number of coins that have basically pulled back a little bit but again you just have to look to the opposite side so you know go to the right hand side and generally they've performed pretty well not NEM unfortunately uh, pancake swap is really just kind of traveling sideways so that's not so bad but the rest of them they've had a little bit of a gain and now they've lost a little bit so it's not the end of the world but my sort of gut feeling is I think some profits are being taken out of the altcoins I'm not saying no altcoins can pump anymore they definitely can but I think people are getting ready to put it back into Bitcoin because they feel like Bitcoin is going to get on a bit of a run. And when Bitcoin gets on of a run, when Bitcoin gets on a run, sorry, the altcoins do get dragged up with it, but they just do it really, really slowly. They don't do it as well as 
Bitcoin does until Bitcoin gets to a peak and then it starts to level off. And then we have basically what we've seen here is, you know, some altcoin sort of season stuff. Mini altcoin seasons is what we've seen so far. All right, let's move on. What do we got here? All right, Bitcoin. So again, we still haven't broken that. We've gotten oh so close. I mean, look at that wick. It's almost perfect right there with the old all-time high. Yes, there was a wick there. We'll just count the candle bodies for now. But it wicked up and touched it and has since fallen back. So again, we've had a few green days here though. One, two, three, four, five, six. This would have been nearly a week's worth of green. So of course, we're going to have a pullback. Now, this is still sort of early. This day has got plenty to go. It could turn into a green candle, but we'll just have to wait and see. Not a lot of volume though. We can see the volume is uh, just not there at the moment. We're not getting these big kind of moves. I mean, this is a big kind of move in the wrong way though. Everyone's really selling and panicking, but things like this, I mean, this is a big move. People really bought in at this price and they were like, yep, thank you very much, I'm gonna take that. And we can look back now and say, who wouldn't want to buy Bitcoin at $34,000? Everyone would be jumping on board. All right, let's get into the news stories because there's some pretty interesting ones. All right, are they going to physically print some Bitcoin? This is interesting and disturbing all at the same time. So a physical Bitcoin may be on its way thanks to Noteworthy, a startup focused on creating top-of-the-line Bitcoin-backed notes. Interesting. A new startup is working on creating the first Bitcoin backed banknotes with the goal of making Bitcoin suitable for offline transactions, streamlining the experience with non tech savvy users. So, again, this does sound interesting, but what worries me about is it, what worries me about it is, you know, how do we link it back? To real Bitcoin though. How can we make sure that it is backed by real Bitcoin and it's not just, you know, the fiat money that we have now pretending to be backed by Bitcoin. So there's some interesting stuff about this and I do agree with, you know, the, the older generation who are just never simply going to be able to get on board with this and there is some. But outside of that, oh, I just, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm leaning more towards no bad idea. But look, I'm happy to be proven wrong. It's at the very least interesting and I'll keep an open mind to it, but I am somewhat skeptical and worried by that. All right, so we saw that Polygon's had a bit of a pullback, but geez, it's been doing well and this is why. It soared by 40% as Coinbase Pro looks to list it tomorrow. So that would be today. This is yesterday's article. So generally people have been buying the rumor and now they're starting to sell the news. So the news is here and they're basically selling it off. So that's why you get, you know, this 40% upwards motion, but then we get this. So we've already lost, you know, 15 sort of percent, but hey, what can you do? It's not the end of the world, it's just the way markets go. All right, Bitcoin. Demand from Goldman Sachs clients is rising, says CAO. All right, US banking giant Goldman Sachs recently decided to restart its cryptocurrency trading desk. This has reportedly led to an increased demand for digital assets among its customer base. That's not surprising at all. According to a Reuters report, Goldman Sachs Chief Operating Officer John Waldron said the firm is exploring how to meet an increasing demand from clients looking to invest into Bitcoin. The Chief Operating Officer said Goldman Sachs would continue to evaluate and engage on uh, crypto for customers. See, the issue here is like they're all happy to do all this stuff and this has sort of happened before. You know, they've kind of got into crypto before, never like they have uh, in this run. But then as soon as the bear market comes, they're out and they say, oh, you know, it was never that good and this just goes to show and then all the sort of FUD comes out. So I'm a little bit kind of skeptical about, you know, how long this is going to last. Will they still have their trading desk, you know, going once we hit the next bear market and we will hit another bear market and that's where we're going to know whether they're legitimately in this space you know kind of for the tech and to build things or is it just a bit of a you know a money pump for them where they can you know make some coin and yeah then they basically get out and wait for the next uh, bull market we'll have to wait and see hopefully they're in it for the right reasons in the long haul but you know i wouldn't be trusting too many of these bigger institutions just yet all right, Israeli asset manager doubles its $100 million Bitcoin investment in just two months. So this is the power of Bitcoin. 
The firm invested $100 million into the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust last year. It has sold one-third and its holdings are still worth $50 million more than the purchase price. So they've sold a third, who knows how much they've got, but then what they have left is still worth $50 million more than what they paid for it. And so I would say that they probably got their money back and some profit. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. They may have just sold a little portion of it just to you know get some of it back and maybe their strategy is to just sell bit by bit when it sort of hits certain marks incrementally you know no one really knows exactly what they're going to do but it is interesting that after two months they sold that's pretty quick and makes me think that they're you know probably just here for a quick flip but again nothing wrong with at least getting your initial uh, initial initial deposit back you know what i mean i suppose that's the way you can say it However much you initially put in, when you know maybe you've doubled or tripled your money, not a bad idea to take back what you initially put in. Right. Israel's uh, Alt Shuchla, I butchered that, I'm sure. Shaham Investment House has doubled its money after tipping 100 million into the Grayscale, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust last year. So again, people are paying a premium for the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, uh, and they're still making plenty of money. So. Yeah, for the institutional buyers, it's it's not a bad route. For anyone else, uh, I don't know about you know buying it through other people. Again, you know like PayPal and things like that. Yes, you can make money, but you don't really own it, and they charge you a fee for it. So, yeah, you make your own decisions. It's not for me. Right, Dash. Dash is set to release its Ethereum decentralized finance bridge after months of testing. Look, every single platform is going to want to connect to Ethereum. And particularly if Ethereum gets, you know, their scaling stuff sorted out, then they they just won't, well, I won't say won't, because who knows, anything can happen. But it's unlikely anyone's going to catch them anytime soon. They will really start to pump once they fix those scaling solutions. So again, there's talk in the next, you know, sort of couple of months that with these layer twos, optimistic and that coming out, that they're going to be a hundred times more efficient already, let alone the you know a couple of thousand times more efficient once ETH 2.0 is fully rolled out. Well, why wouldn't Dash and every other platform want to have a bridge, a bridge, sorry, built to Ethereum? Of course they would. Payment-focused crypto project Dash has offic- is officially sorry launching its Ethereum DeFi bridge. According to an announcement issued on Wednesday, the foray into decentralized finance is made possible via a partnership with DeFi gateway protocol StakeHound and will see Dash holders able to interact with DeFi protocols on the Ethereum chain. Dash holders will also be able to stake their tokens and participate in yield farming while also gaining exposure to lending markets and arbitrage opportunities within the Ethereum DeFi matrix. So and this is, again, why I think DeFi is going to be so big. Uh, yeah, and of course these other projects are going to want to hook up with it. And it's pretty much all being done on Ethereum. Well, not all, but I would say it'd have to be probably 85% of it, maybe 75%. I don't know if we're going down to a real low end, but somewhere about there is where all the DeFi projects are being built. And that's on Ethereum, and that's why I'm so bullish on Ethereum. Still like other projects, Cosmos, um, Oh, yeah, Cosmos, Ethereum, uh, BNB. There, there's a number of good projects out there. It's not, you know, Cardano, a whole stack. But you've got to make your mind up and do your research. All right, NFTs just continue to go from sort of strength to strength. Although I have stated already that I am a little bit worried that it may, might be overpriced at the moment. I get the feeling like NFTs are in that kind of DeFi bubble that we were in late last year, around sort of July, August, and then they have a fair, had a fairly hefty sell-off, and I think these will have the same. I don't think it means it's over for it. I just think they might be close to a sort of market top, and then they're gonna pull back. But hey, look, if you're invested in the actual platform, you're probably doing amazingly. The booming NFT market has already produced a lot of big winners, but the, the nifty gateway marketplace might be the biggest of them all. So. The Winklevi twins, as some people refer to them, but the Winklevoss twins, they purchased this and it is now touted to be worth somewhere between $774 million to $1.2 billion. And I've got no idea what price they paid for it, but I'm going to say 
it's probably done pretty well since. And this was back in 2019 when they purchased it. So I'd say a lot less than what they currently, uh, that it's currently being valuated for now. Right, real estate. Will that be the next frontier for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? So crypto adoption keeps spreading among the real estate industry in Europe, specifically in Spain. Recently, a leading agency in the Canary Islands announced it would start accepting cryptocurrency payments. Of course they would. Now, what has me a little bit kind of dubious, not so much dubious, I'm not sure what word I'm looking for, but I would say it is just the, the real estate company that will accept the Bitcoin and they will likely then pay uh, the other people it in cash. And so the real estate agent could quite likely be the only one that keeps the cryptocurrency. So again, someone pays 100,000 for a house in Bitcoin, the real estate company takes that, uh, likely has some cash on hand, they put that cash to the, to the seller and then they keep the Bitcoin and then make the profits off that. I'm not sure they'd simply just be handing over the Bitcoin. And I know if I was selling my house uh, and I was happy to take cryptocurrencies for it, then I wouldn't want simply my real estate agent to get the cryptocurrencies and then I get the cash unless I thought, you know, we were close to the top and everything was going to go backwards. But again, what we've learned so far is even though Bitcoin will go through another bear cycle, if you just if you generally hold and are never financial advice, just my personal opinion, yes, you'll probably have these massive lows for a while, but eventually you will make more. And I've said this before, I got into Bitcoin at around about sort of $8,000 back in 2017. It was fairly late. I watched it go right up to 20,000. I watched it come back down to $3,000 and I never sold any of it. I'm still holding on to it. And it is now worth $55,000. So again, I didn't have a whole Bitcoin though, so I don't have $55,000 worth of Bitcoin. It was only a couple of hundred dollars worth, but that couple of hundred dollars worth turned into about sort of $4,000, turned into about 300 and something dollars, and now is worth, I think, around about two and a half, three thousand dollars $3,000. So yes, I went through a bear market where it lost a lot, but I just held long enough, and now it's worth a whole lot more. So again, moving on, last but not least, Grayscale. So, digital asset management firm Grayscale has halted inflows to the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust after the fund traded at a 15% discount to the price of Bitcoin. Rocked by the number of alternative Bitcoin trusts, the Canadian Bitcoin exchange traded funds, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, has been trading below the price of Bitcoin for several weeks. Its sibling Grayscale Ethereum Trust has also flipped into negative territory. So that's pretty interesting. I'm not really sure what to think about that. Obviously, you know, people have stopped buying and they're probably selling is what is happening. And I'm talking about the, the actual trust parts themselves. So the people who got in nice and early, uh, I think you have to wait around about six months to 12 months before you can sell. So my gut feeling is we're probably at the point where some people are now have the opportunity to sell. And so they have been selling. Um, but yeah, interesting that it's trading uh, at a discount and that they've closed it down because you think that would be a reason for a lot more people to get in rather than paying the full price. But anyway, all right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.